So now, got to reach in this pocket, pull out the next phone. Let me make sure that I bullet got through these. Bullet, bullet text, bullet contact, slide six, Nokia F82. The Nokia. Why a Nokia, for heaven's sake? And is this the newest Nokia? By no means. If I always bought the newest phone, the grant that's helping me do this would have been expended three weeks after I got the grant. Things change constantly. You can't go into the store today. I went to the store yesterday, last night, before dinner. Kim and I went and got new phones. Okay? And I'm convinced that if we went into that same store six months from now, we couldn't buy the same phone or most of the phones in the store at that moment. There's a huge change taking place in phones each and every day. But this Nokia I got, thank you very much, Perkins, who got a donation from a company that went out of business and gave away a number of, or to Perkins, a number of phones that would otherwise gone in the dumpster. And it came with some nice specialties to it. I'm going to turn on my Nokia. Does a little vibrating jiggle when you hold down the power button for a moment. So let me tell you about the physical layout of this phone, what I like and don't like about the layout. One, it's a candy bar phone. It doesn't flip, it doesn't slide. So if I'm going to do anything that's text-oriented, I'm going to use T9 or that regular ABC business on it. By the way, it's already mostly booted. It's a faster booting phone than my SMT 5800. A lot faster, wouldn't you say, on the whole booting thing? Big, big difference. Okay. You might have noticed that this came with a skin on it. Everybody knows what a skin is. A funny little, a funny little slipper that you put over it to protect it from bumps. In this particular case, for me to use one of the pieces of software I have on it, they recommend that you only and always have it in a skin. You can buy these, you know, if you go on to virtually anything on the net, you can buy these things for a couple of bucks. They're not expensive by any means, but you have to know your exact phone model when you go looking for them on Amazon or whatever. All right, so it has a skin on it. It has a standard numeric keypad at the bottom. It has a little uh, square you may remember just above the two key with the top edge, bottom, left, right, that act as the up, down, left, right arrow keys in the center of it. If you push it, that's the same, same thing as saying OK or select. On the left-hand side, there's a clear square, and on the right-hand side, there's a square that has a dash in it. Those are the left and right soft keys. Their outer edges are the same thing as the send and cancel keys on this phone. Along the side, there's a place to plug in a charger. There's a place to um, control the volume externally. On the top, there's a, oh, thank goodness, a earphone jack. And it's not just earphone, it's one of those ones for cell phones, where if you get the kind that have the microphone on it, it acts as the microphone as well. Okay? And then there are a couple of other buttons that deal with things like, let's take a picture. And that's a hugely important thing in this particular phone. Bullet Windows Mobile. It is, again, a Windows Mobile phone. So I could put Mobile Speak on this instead of the screen reader I have in it, which is called Tox. Virtually the same price from the company called Nuance. Okay. And the fact of the matter is, it's every bit as good a screen reader as mobile speak. I have seen very little difference between the two. You might do something a little quirky with it, and you say, I like this one better than that. But overall, they're very, very similar. Bullet Wayfinder. I have a GPS on this also called Wayfinder, which I didn't pay $800 for. I paid. 120 for it. 120 dollars for GPS. That's pretty good. I still had to buy an external GPS receiver at 50 bucks. That's and both of them, by the way, connect to their phones by way of what's called Bluetooth. But in this particular case, this phone, this Wayfinder program was designed differently. You didn't buy it download all the maps onto the phone, download the program onto the phone, and then go out and do your thing with GPS. The maps on this are not in the phone. The maps are on the website, and so they're supposed to be continuously updated. None of this downloading the latest maps. They're there the whole time. 
It does mean it's at a little lag time because when you say, where am I, it takes a look at your latitude, your longitude, sends it up to the web, finds out the right location, sends it back to you and says, you're at your neighbor's house. <laughs> okay? So the negative of this is the company went out of business. Now, if the makers of Trekker went out of business, you'd still own the maps, right? But if the makers of Wayfinder went out of business, who owns the website? So they tried to shut it down on us, and we customers ranted and raved, and they turned it back on because even though that product was no longer out there, the company still was, and the company could be pursued for a violation of our contract. But they are not obligated to update it. So every day, as new restaurants close and new restaurants open, the map becomes less and less accurate. Okay? Slide seven. Applications. One telephone. One answering the call. One making the call. One. I'm going to shut it up because you don't want to hear that long list again. It functions like a telephone. Woo! It also can do text messaging. It can do email. It can do web browsing, calendaring, contact management, all of those things that we might be doing with Outlook on our desktops, this can do as its PDA. Talks does a very good job of reading whatever it needs to read at a given time. One of the reasons I have a Nokia in the collection, however, is because, let's see if it does it now. No, don't want to do talks. Back it up. Come on, machine, get back to me. Notice a disclaimer window. Digital cartography can't be an accurate hassle. And a T window. Sus zero nine slash eleven slash twenty. Let's try it this way. Contacts. Did you hear say key one reader? Because when I push this. The KNFB Reader Mobile. This phone is a scanner. And it's in my phone so that when I'm at a restaurant and they bring me the mes menu, instead of me having to say to the waitress, when you get a moment, would you please read me something? Well, what would you like, sir? It's an awfully long menu. <laughs> Fine. Bring me a Diet Coke, whip out this, put it in the earphone, and snippity snap snip. I'm reading the menu. It has to be a particular type of Nokia phone because what makes it good for scanning is the unique flash mechanism that's in it. So I can hold it over a print document, hit the one key. Folder into documents. Folder November 03, 2008. Fruit directory. Oh, cut it out. I didn't tell you to do that. Home. There we go. I'm back at home. Image capture. If I push that button again, this is just the one key with it held 12 inches over take the page. The you heard it take the picture. It then says it's processing it. Right now it's trying to figure out how to read aloud the microphone yeah. cover. But you get the idea. Now, is this the way to go to college? Instead of a scanner to read your textbooks, you bring this phone? Absolutely not. This is a single page type screen reader. Yes, I can scan a multiple page document. But it's really intended to be used for getting access to that print material when you're sitting at a meeting and somebody starts handing out pieces of paper. How many times have I been in that environment? Thousands. And they say, sorry, Brian. Sorry, Brian. We meant to send this to you electronically. We'll do it after the meeting. And then they proceed. Well, this is a marvelous tool for doing this kind of thing. I now can simply write down their name to send hate mail later. <laughs> Pull out this phone, put in the earphone, snippity snip and be reading a little bit closer to the time that I cited colleagues around the table are doing reading. So it's a great device in that regard. Cell phones 
smart cell phones can have all kinds of applications added to them, but only the Nokia is capable of having this particular application added to it. Slide eight, Blackberry curve, Blackberry curve. So where's my Blackberry curve? More than halfway. Well, this is good. So what I'm going to do is talk to my friends out there who, anybody here have the KNFB reader? And how is it working for you? Where do you find yourself using it? Right. It is so portable. The portability, when I first started in this business more than 25 years ago, a Kurzweil machine was the size of a chest freezer. It sounded like a drowning Russian. It could understand four fonts. Four fonts, for heaven's sake. A three-year-old can write in four fonts. And when you said, scan the next page, Remember that small sweater I described you could knit while a phone booted? Well, you could do one for the whole family while you waited for one page to scan. <laughs> now it's gone down to the size of a cell phone while the price is still outrageous. What's the price tag you pay? For KNFB Reader, it runs between, depending on where you buy it, what truck it fell off, you know, those kinds of things. Um, upwards of $1,000 anyway. But the original K uh, Kurzweil cost 50000 So it's 150th the price, and it fits in your pocket. Not a bad development process, huh? I'm excited about it. And it's only one of many, many things, as you'll see over the course of the next very few months. Scanning is not going to be limited to KNFB Reader on a Nokia much longer. Anybody ever hear of a company called uh, Serotech? They brought us SA to go and access the screen reader called Screen Access. And they're also the, the, the uh, owner operator of the SAM network. They are speaking about coming out with their scanner on an iPhone for probably a third the price of the KNFB reader. That's an exciting prospect, I think. Okay, who said they had the Nokia? And what, which model Nokia do you have? The N75. Now, how long have you had it? And what do you think of it so far? This Nokia is not a Verizon phone. It's an AT&T phone. The SMT5800 was a Verizon phone. Um, and you do have to think in terms of those carriers out there. Verizon is unique as a company in that it goes out and talks to the manufacturers of the phones and says, we know you've got this really nifty phone and we'd like one just like it, except we'd like two things to be true. One is we'd like to turn this feature on, this feature off, change this one to be over there. And make sure you build in a radio receiver into every unit. <laughs> but what really matters is that they want you to use their phone for their service, for the most part. Now, don't think that that's dirty, nasty old Verizon. Because how many companies can you use an iPhone with? One. Well... My friends who are very much involved in iPhone development, you hear rumors about, oh, it's going to be available on other companies any day soon. The people on the inside say, do not plan on getting one for your next birthday. This is their nice way of saying it's at least a year out before that happens. Anyway, so again, the whole process out there is changing so radically that you need to keep in mind those kinds of things.